I want to show you a really easy and basic way I mend clothing with stains that won't come out in the wash. My toddler recently knocked a cup of coffee out of my hands, so I use this technique on the sleeves of my favorite shirt to cover a series of medium-sized coffee splatters. I call these guys wagon wheels, and they are just a series of easy-to-master embroidery stitches, simple enough for the complete novice. Let's get started. Here's what you'll need. First, you'll need at least one color of embroidery floss. Next, you'll need an erasable fabric pen, a pair of scissors, and a sharp embroidery needle. Make sure it's a sharp needle, especially if you're working with a thicker fabric like denim. If you are covering stain on a stretchy fabric like my knit jersey shirt, you will need a small scrap of stabilizing fabric, which can be any light cotton fabric. You can skip this if you're mending something like pants or anything heavier. You will also need a circular template. I am using an empty thread spool. The circular template can be anything around the house that is larger than your largest stain. And finally, a thimble is always good to use if you have one laying around. I use these friction thimbles, also known as needle grabbers, and this metal thimble when I'm mending a lot or through a heavier fabric. Both are optional. Before I start stitching on my garment, let me show you the basics on a piece of muslin. Sewing on a garment, especially a sleeve, can be tricky, so practicing on a piece of scrap fabric might be a good idea if this is not something you have a lot of experience with. I'll start by centering my circle template over the stain and tracing around the circle with my erasable fabric marker. With my threaded embroidery needle, I'll place a knot at the end of my thread and enter from the back of my fabric at any point along my drawn line. Don't pull your knot all the way through. Leave a little tail. This will help with tension issues as you stitch. I'm going to do a basic back stitch all the way around my drawn circle. Here you can see the stitch demonstrated, which can best be described as stitching two ahead below your fabric and then stitching one stitch back on top. The back stitch is a really common embroidery stitch and easy to get the hang of. Once you have made your way back to the beginning, with your final stitch, complete the circle with the first part of the back stitch. But this time, pull your thread through to just inside the completed circle. Start a second row of stitches just inside the last one, back stitching all the way around once again. The second set of stitches should be neatly tucked just inside the first back stitched circle. You can make your stitches neater by using the stitches from your last row as a guide, either making them the same as the previous row, or my preferred method, which is to stagger them by half, similar to the way bricks are laid. When you come to the end of the second circle, start a third in the same way you started the second. Once again, you'll backstitch all the way around for one final time. When you are finished, you will have three backstitch circles all neatly tucked into each other. Tie a knot on the underside of your fabric, again making sure to leave yourself at least a quarter inch of space between your knot and your fabric. Before starting the embroidery in the center of your circle, make sure to start with a new length of embroidery thread. This will cut down on the future snags and tension issues while you're stitching. Start from the back side of your fabric, entering the circle just next to the center. Again, leaving a little bit of space between your knot and your fabric. Now work your way around your circle from the center to just inside your previous stitches 
four times at roughly 90 degrees apart from each other. Avoid stitching directly into the center of your circle, but to just outside the centermost point. As you continue to stitch, this point will get very congested with thread, so you want to give yourself some room to keep adding more. When you have four radiating stitches every 90 degrees, start working your way around the circle again, adding one more radiating line stitch between each of your previous four stitches. Continue in this way, working your way around your circle, adding more radiating line stitches between two previous stitches until you have filled in any empty space between your lines. Tie off your thread when you have finished, again leaving a bit of space between your knot and the underside of your fabric. And that's the basic stitch! Pretty simple and pretty easy to get the hang of. To mend a garment using the series of stitches I have just demonstrated, your process will be basically the same. If you are stitching on a stretchy fabric, I recommend using a bit of scrap fabric behind each of your wagon wheels to stabilize your fabric and help you get a more even stitch. Keep in mind that embroidering on something like a sleeve will be awkward at points because you can't move it around and always get a good grip for easy stitching. As a general rule, stitching counterclockwise is most comfortable for right-handed people and clockwise for left-handed. When you begin stitching the center stitches on your garment, make sure the first radiating line is long enough to cover the largest part of your stain. You can use this technique on any garment, including pants. If you are stitching on something made from a heavier fabric, you can skip the stabilizing fabric and just start stitching. <laughs> 